Hello and welcome back to part two of the most masculine fragrances for men. What do we mean by a masculine fragrance? Well, we're talking about fragrances that make you feel something like these guys. So today it's time for part two of the top 10 most masculine fragrances. So I did a previous video on uh, this subject. So we're looking at really manly smelling designer fragrances, designer or cheapies, not niche. And there were so many out there that I missed. And that even in my own collection, that I still had and didn't put in that I decided to do a follow up. Inevitably, I'm going to miss some more that some of you will say had to be in there. But uh, please let me know which other ones I missed out. Might even do another video on this one day. Who knows? There's so many options. So we're looking at things that smell very manly in and of themselves not just nice uh, men's fragrances so Dior Sauvage is a nice men's fragrance but and it's very popular and other people will like the way you smell probably if you wear that but it's not in and of itself incredibly masculine smelling same you know La Nuit de L'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent quite sweet and metrosexual very nice but doesn't have a real manly manly vibe about it these ones hopefully do, so we're looking at old aromatic fougeres, things from the 70s and 80s, powerhouse fragrances with musky notes or animalic stuff going on, leathery notes, tobacco, heavy woody kind of stuff, stuff that smells grown up and masculine, still hopefully very nice and high quality, but anything that's got that rugged, manly testosterone aura about it. I'm gonna jump about in era, there's gonna be about 12 or so, so the idea of it being a top 10 is out the window. Let me know what you think. First up then, Versace Man from 2003, a really lovely fragrance that you can get for around about 30 pounds for 100 mil. And I think it might be discontinued as far as being produced goes, but there still seems to be lots of stock out there. I'm not sure uh, about the discontinued thing. Anyway, the smell on this one, really, really nice scent. Um, it's, the keynote is tobacco and it's a very dry form of tobacco, not combined as is often the case with a heavy amount of vanilla, and that's what makes this one probably so masculine overall. There's also angelica root in the notes, saffron, cardamom, and cashmere. Does open up with some neroli and bergamot. Really kind of, I get a kind of resinous, dark woody feel. Reminds me of ebony wood. If that had to be represented in a smell, that's not a note in the fragrance, maybe this is, is a, the way I think it would smell. Definitely a dry, bitter kind of tobacco note in there. Almost a dark, really, really dark, bitter chocolate thing. Just a tiny bit of a, a sort of bitter sweet element, but not a very candy floss kind of sweetness at all. Very grown up and manly. Spicy, woody, great grown up tobacco note, and uh, an excellent choice if you're looking for something really different out there for colder seasons. Quite a good performer on my skin, lasts well. Projection not massive, but it uh, makes it a good choice for a quite elegant and sophisticated, but definitely very manly winter or autumn type of smell. So Versace Man from 2003, Domitile Michelon was the perfume here on that one. Let's move on. I also want to include this one, and this is Pinard Club Man, the classic uh, aftershave most popular, I think, in America in barbershops, still used a lot, uh, the thing that they spray on your neck after they've shaved you. Really nice florals in this one. It's an aromatic fougere type scent. So there's oak moss and there's a lot, a lot of lavender. Many people compare it to uh, Penhaligon Sartorial for a tiny fraction of the price. Not quite the same as that one and maybe not quite as good, but I do really like this one. In and of itself, it doesn't smell incredibly manly, but that association with the well-groomed man coming out of the barbershop makes this a really masculine scent, I think, and a real classic. So definitely worth having in your collection. I've got it in a little sprayer, so I sometimes just use it as I would use an eau de toilette, or you can actually splash it on as an aftershave. Definitely manly, the barbershop type scent, if you like things like Brute that I mentioned in my last video, 
great alternative and I rather like the design of the plastic bottle there. Without further ado, let's move on and um, let's go for this one. So I think another one from Bentley probably deserves a place and it's Bentley for Men Absolute. A really modern release from 2014, meant to smell very, very similar to Gucci Porom Number no. 1, uh, which you can no longer get unless you're very lucky on eBay or spend a lot of money. This one, again, it's very woody. It's a, it's a very woody, spicy, dry kind of scent. There's a certain freshness about it. There's some juniper berry listed in the notes as well. Apparently, there's a little bit of oud, but you're not going to notice a very strong oud smell. But a very dry, ashy, woody, grown-up, masculine scent with a certain freshness about it. But because it's got that very heavy, woody element, I think it stays very masculine. So a sort of fresh, dry, woody thing going on here. Quite grown-up and definitely very masculine and different to some of the more juvenile offerings on our designer fragrance shelves these days. So well worth checking out. Uh, price about 30 something pounds on uh, on Nortino in the UK. So really good, nice performer, lasts really well, good longevity, all that kind of stuff. So recommended indeed that one, Bentley for Men Absolute. Next up then, let's go back in time a bit. Antonio Puig's Quorum, so Quorum a real powerhouse of the 80s. Uh, this one has a healthy dose of oak moss and also rather a, a prominent tobacco note again in this one. Very woody, a lot of people compare it to Polo Green by Ralph Florem. Uh, and indeed there is a similarity. It's got that kind of green, piney, mossy feel combined with a, a lot of dark woods, oak moss and a sort of a woody, musky combination in this one. Very grown up and quite powerful stuff. I've got a slightly older formula. I haven't done an in-depth comparison with the new one at all, but I think this actually, that it kind of something about the bottle put me off it a bit at first. It looks so dated with the bottle, but the smell is really deep and rich and masculine, uh, mossy, woody, and with this twist of the tobacco in there, well worth trying out and quite similar to Ralph Lauren's Polo Green. You can pick it up for a really low price. And again, with those kind of ingredients, you get quite strong performance on that one. So well worth checking out Antonio Puig's Quorum from 1982, something of a classic that is now very, very cheaply available. Moving on then, next up, I'm going to have a controversial choice. Let me know, do you agree that this one is worthy of a place in the most masculine fragrances list? Dior Homme Parfum from 2014, Perfume uh, Francois Demachy. So this takes the Dior Homme concept of using iris for this kind of waxy lipstick-esque effect to its perhaps most masculine place that that series has ever been. Okay, the, the, the original fragrance and maybe even Dior Homme Intense are a little bit metrosexual, everyone says. So I'm being a bit controversial here. But because this one has, uh, along with this waxy iris lipstick-esque note, the addition of a lot of leather, and uh, even listed in some note listings as a bit of oud, but certainly a dark kind of woody and spicy element. I think it makes it more grown up and uh, to me, kind of this, a new modern masculine powerhouse type scent with this iris note harnessed in perhaps its most uh, masculine version that you can get of any of these kind of iris scents. So I really like Dior en Parfum and I think this is a new modern 21st conception 21st century version of what masculinity can smell like and I do find that one to be very manly. Great performance on that one, pretty much beast mode, Dior en Parfum. Moving back in time again now, uh, this one was a, a really uh, glaring emis emission from the last list and this is Azaro Porom from 1978. So again, one of the classic aromatic fougere or barbershop type fragrances. So this one, uh, the perfume is apparently Martin Hiddenreich, Gerard Anthony and Richard Wurtz. Uh, we've got anise in this one, lavender, and a quite a lot of muskiness and patchouli in it. So if you want a bit of a lavender barbershop feel with a twist of this almost licorice-esque anise uh, undertone and quite a lot of muskiness, that's what you're going to get with Azaro Porom. Regarded for many people as the sort of prototype on which Rive Gauche Porom, the great shaving foam scent from 2003 was based. This one very similar to that but a little bit more rough around the edges and rugged, maybe even more manly. So definitely well worth checking out and a real benchmark uh, in the aromatic fougere barbershop shop type genre uh, from the 1970s, 1978, and a pretty strong performer, uh, that one even in uh, the modern formulas as far as I know. I think this one is the slightly vintage version with this bottle design, not the first version, but somewhere in the middle. Moving on then, what's next? Um, let's have a look. Okay, we're going to have a look now at Dior Jewels. 
I mentioned Koros and Antaeus in the last list, and I missed, missed out the other big one of the big three powerhouses from three of the big fragrance companies, and this is Dior's Jewels from 1980 one year before Antaeus or Koros. Spicy and musky is what you get with this one. Definitely a heavy dose of, of musk in this fragrance. Other listed notes include Artemisia, Bergamot, Sage, Lavender, Cumin, Cyclamen, Rose. There's uh, Castorium in the original a note listing which I found on one of the websites. Uh, there's Moss and there's Leather as well. So very, very um, fresh, crisp opening actually with this one. Slightly more so than you get with Antaeus or Koros. Quite a green opening which is really nice. And then this spicy, woody combination and definitely a little bit of an alemannic, gnarly kind of element to the fragrance. So a real classic from 1980. They have reissued it and the modern version smells a bit different to my vintage one but pretty darn close and a good reformulation. So very grown up, very masculine, hair on your chest, powerhouse scent from 1980, Dior Jewels. Next up, another glaring omission in my last list and I've checked, I have to apologize. I said I didn't like it that much last time, but been getting to like it a bit more in the last week or two. So it's Lapidus Pour Homme, the powerhouse beast mode scent from 1987. Basically think Koros, but on steroids. Uh, it's got a lot of that muskiness about it that you get with uh, Yves Saint Laurent's Chorus. It also has a pineapple note and a bit more fruitiness than Yves Saint Laurent's Chorus. So kind of musky, um, almost barbershop fougere, plus a little bit of animalicness, but an added sweet fruitiness uh, with this one, I find a little bit more noticeable of the, the honey note that I think it does share with Chorus. Fruity and sweet, and somebody said, I think like uh, if Joe Pesky from Goodfellas wore Aventus, it would smell like this, which is a pretty good description. So Koros, but more so, and with a little bit of added sweetness. It is beast mode, it is very masculine, and the bottle is brilliant. I love the advert from the, uh, the 80s there, the, uh, the moment for eternity or something. Lovely concept. I like this fragrance a bit more than I did last week, and so I'm going to put it in there. It's really masculine. You can get it online for good prices, and uh, it's just if you're a collector, having that bottle is worth it. Uh, how often you're going to want to wear that don't know. Don't know if the rest of the world's going to appreciate it, but let's put it back in in a rightful place of being in the, the one of the great masculine fragrances. Next up, Zerius from Givenchy. This 1986 release is a real interesting one. I put it in a barbershop list, and I think it just about could be described as a bit of a barbershop fragrance. Great bottle there. Really love that. And uh, this. Uh, fragrance from 1986 took the barbershop shop soapy fougere type of thing but added a little bit of a deep darkness to it with the added note of incense so you definitely get this soapy thing with this fragrance but you get a little bit more than that there's incense there's leather in there and uh, we've got this kind of dark mysterious twist on something like Azaro Pour Homme or something like that. It's got a little bit more to it and a, a bit of a, at the time, perhaps a more modern twist on a fougere, a more daring and exotic version of that. Really, really powerful performer, uh, kind of soapy and manly, but with a little bit of underlying darkness in this one. And less of the animalic off-putting stuff that you might notice a little bit in things like Jewels and Koros. So it's reissued in the Parfum Mythique series. I'm not sure about that one. I haven't tried it, but I do really have a high opinion of this one. It's extremely manly and a great one if you can find the old design, that kind of Art Deco bottle. It's just fantastic. So Zerius from Givenchy and that was 1986. Next, another one that I really couldn't leave out if I did a second video is YSL, Yves Saint Laurent's Pour Homme, the first fragrance for men from Yves Saint Laurent. This is sort of a citrusy fragrance that manages to be very manly at the same time. So normally I'm not including your citrus aromatics or things like Chanel, Pomme Assure, which are very nice, elegant, citrusy chypres or that kind of thing because they're not as manly as these ones but this is if you're looking for something citrusy with maybe a, a look towards what was coming later from Yves Saint Laurent with Koros with a bit more of that musky underlying testosterone element Yves Saint Laurent Pour Homme from 1971 really achieves that and uh, so it's very strong performing in this old formula I believe the reissue in the uh, La Collection series is meant to be very good so well worth checking out for a sort of citrusy manly smell citrus aromatic stroke chypre with this underlying rugged testosterone element is what we get with YSL's Pour Homme from 1971. Okay, now next up, we're gonna have a, an absolutely beautiful scent that is one of my all-time favorites. So this is Chanel's Egoist from 1990. 
not really the typical powerhouse 80s type of scent that we've had so many of. A different thing altogether, a lovely sandalwood scent with some real nice spiciness in there. Uh, there's some cinnamon in it as well and a nice little mandarin bit in the uh, opening giving a little bit of a sort of a freshness when it opens up, but compared to uh, their modern offerings like Bleu de Chanel and uh, the Allure Homme line and all its flankers, much more masculine and rich and woody and spicy. I think spiciness, if it's combined with woodiness and a sort of a dark overall thing is as a masculine thing, that this heavily spiced sense, as long as they're not overdoing it with loads of sweetness, which then takes it to more of a kind of um, bubble gum world. But this one definitely, you know, things like uh, Spice Bomb that you can get now. Quite nice scent, but not so masculine to me. This one, really, really uh, a kind of masculine powerhouse, but different to what had been before in the 80s. Uh, much more of a, a sort of sweetness. There is vanilla in there, I think, and Brett seed as well. But it's sweetness tempered with a real woody element and a masculine spicy feel. So br brilliant fragrance. And for any fan of the note of sandalwood, this is one of the great go-to uh, reference points, I think, for masculine sandalwood fragrances. Definitely masculine, powerhouse performer brilliant grown-up scent that you can still get today. I like the modern version. I think this is a slightly older bottle. Differences aren't that great in my humble opinion. Okay, last but not least, last one in the list is going to be a real rarity. This is Moschino Porom, and this was released back in 1991. Uh, it's a real leathery fragrance with Oris Root or Iris as another key player. So pretty different version of Iris to Dior en Parfum. But again, it's a, a masculine smell with Iris in it. Definitely leathery and spicy, a kind of warm, waxy smell with this one. Kind of fougere-ish as well. There's, I think there's some coconut in there. There's kind of a little bit of a sweetness. I think cinnamon might well be listed as one of the, the notes. There's lavender, so there's some of the kind of barbershop stuff, but a little bit more leathery and spicy and very complex, rich, hard to find, but a great, great eau de toilette. And uh, back in 1990, you could really get some masculine fragrances on your shelves, things like Balenciaga, Porom, uh, another example, which I don't own, but there were tons of Valentino Vendetta, didn't quite make this list, but Moschino Porom, if you're lucky enough to find one with this great bottle design, is an absolute powerhouse masculine fragrance, complex, leathery, woody, spicy. They just don't make them like this anymore. So worth searching out on eBay if you can find it for a reasonable price. So there we are, those were some great, really manly choices. Let me know which ones I missed. I'm sure I missed tons out. And let me know if you thought mine qualified for being regarded as very manly smelling. I think they did. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, whatever we're doing in life, let's project. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.